we gather at the last day of this octave of Easter, that every day this week we have gathered and treated it as Easter Sunday with that great joy of the resurrection. It's the uh, most sacred time of the year, uh, Holy Week and Easter and this great joy and all the beautiful liturgies uh, we had last week and all of those things that help us to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. As I reflect on those and pray on all the things uh, that we've heard, I think it's easy for us to see the big picture. Right? We have the cliff notes, if you were. We see all of what is going on, what the Lord has done, what he's going to do, what he's going to do in this Easter season. These 40 days, a new journey. A journey to the ascension when Christ will rise uh, once again to his heavenly Father, waiting to draw us to himself. And then a few days later, we celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit, the institution of the church. We see all that, we know all of that, but the apostles didn't quite have the cliff notes. Here they are a week later, okay, the Lord is risen from the dead. They're in fear. They find themselves in, uh, they know the tomb is empty, so they're still scratching their head. I know Jesus has risen, you know, he, people have seen him, or Mary has seen him. The angel has spoken to Peter, and yet they are locked in a room in that fear and dismay. And you can only imagine their reaction. They're sitting there, you know, uh, cards going around playing euchre. Uh, just seeing if you're awake today. <laughs> but here they are sitting there trying to build up each other, right? And all of a sudden Jesus appears. Whoa, where'd you come from, Lord? I can imagine their reaction. And naturally so, the Lord uh, gives that great line to them. Peace be with you. I would want the Lord to say, peace be with you too. I don't know what's going on, right? Here's Jesus arrives. And so there's so much going on here that the apostles encounter the risen Lord. They see the nail marks, the spear uh, in his side. They see that they can see those wounds and his risen body. They know it truly is the Lord risen from the dead. That the Lord comes to us. He reassures us that peace might be with us. That we might dwell with the risen Lord. So he spends these 40 days that we're embarking on with the apostles. Building them up for the mission that he is sending them on. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Great example for us. It's why we gather on Sundays, why we call it a solemnity, the highest feast, that we might rejoice when we see the risen Lord in the Eucharist. When we see the Lord, we too might rejoice. That Christ's peace might be with us. That as the Father has sent him, so the Lord sends us. So he sent the apostles. That he came to them to build them up for the mission, to send them to all ends of the earth, to be agents of his mercy, that he might send us on mission as well, that the Lord's peace might be with us. I think poor Thomas gets a bad rap. Doubting Thomas, all of us, yeah, we know those people, yeah, we call them Doubting Thomas. To this day, really, 2,000 years later, poor guy gets a bad rap. You know, Peter denied the Lord, and yet he's the rock of the church, and Thomas gets Doubting Thomas. But I think there's an honesty in that. I think there's something uh, that should reassure us that those moments of our lives, when we find ourselves in doubt, in fear, we lock ourselves away knowing that the Lord wants to come to us as well, that we might not be unbelieving, but believing. That we come to encounter Thomas had a powerful encounter with Jesus and so Jesus in this resurrection invites us to have a powerful uh, interaction with him to come to him again he comes in our midst every week every week in the Eucharist Jesus is truly present 
And we need to ask the Lord to help our unbelief that we might believe and know in a profound way the Lord in the Eucharist. That we might know him in a profound way in his word when we receive him. That we might receive the healing and the mercy that God wants to bring to us, that Christ desires to bring to our hearts. That we might not be unbelieving, but believing. And so we celebrate this day the divine mercy, the mercy of God. We experience that most perfectly in the sacrament of reconciliation. The sacrament that Christ gives to the apostles today in the gospel. Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. This is the passage where we uh, share with our uh, Christian brothers and sisters where Jesus told us of the sacrament of reconciliation. To be reconciled to him that the apostles, the first priests and bishops of the church, of which ministry, by the grace of God, I get to participate in, in whose person they were, they stood in the person of Christ, so do I, very humbly, as a priest. That we come to Christ's representative on earth to reconcile ourselves to the Lord to receive his mercy, that whose sins are forgiven are truly forgiven. And that's why we must uh, avail ourselves, as the church says, minimally once a year or any time we're aware of mortal sin, but that we should frequent the sacrament of reconciliation often. I recommend once a month. I can't remember past that. Um, you're probably better than me. You could probably go two months, but I can't remember past that. But we come for that grace the strength we need to uh, live a life of virtue, to turn from sin. As I've often told you, I can't forgive my own sins. i got to go to a priest just like you. You're nervous. How do you think a priest feels going to a brother priest? I know better. I do this all the time. Here are your confessions, and I walk in just like you do, with your head hung down. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned. I'm back again with the same sins. I know, what do we always say? What do we want? New sins? Okay, at least we know what they are. No, you don't want new sins, by the way, okay? Just helpful fatherly advice here. We come to the mercy of God. He already knows what we have done, and he loves us so much that he does not take our sins from us. He receives them when we give them to his care when we entrust our sins to the Lord, when we speak them out loud to the priest, then Jesus takes them away. He receives them from us. And so let us live in that freedom that comes from the mercy of God, that nothing, nothing, nothing we ever do will keep us from that mercy. Peter denied the Lord. He's the rock of the church. We must seek God's mercy to frequent that sacrament, that we might too be able to go on mission, to be uh, those who receive the peace of Christ then, who give that to others, who share with others the peace of Christ, the mercy that we have received from God, that we might be merciful people, that we will change the world like the apostles did by being agents of mercy by sharing the peace of Christ. And so let us today ask Peter to help, uh, to ask Thomas in our unbelief to strengthen us, that, our, that we might be believing, that our unbelief might fall away to the truth of Christ who has made himself present to us in the Eucharist. Let us draw close to Christ who is the divine physician, the physician of our souls. Let us come to Christ that he might Forgive us of our sins, that we might live in his mercy and his joy and his peace, that we might be that band of joyful missionary disciples to go forth with that peace, that others too might come receive the mercy of God.